Laura? Thank, thank you so much, uh, Madam Testmaster uh, Sharon. So my name is Laura Barker and I am the contest chair for the evaluation contest this morning. This is my first ever go at being a contest chair. So I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you'll bear with me as I may stumble and fumble through some of this, but we're gonna have a great contest. We've got some uh, just incredible uh, fun coming up for you, but to get us warmed up, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. So I'm gonna ask everybody to unmute yourselves and this activity is a collective goal of the group as a group we are going to count up to the number 10. only one person can speak at a time and you do so by saying the number out loud there's no designated order of who goes after whom Plus, if anyone speaks on top of each other, even by a second, by saying There's the same, I'm sorry, oh, by saying the same number at the same time, we have to start over again at the number one. Oh, no. So, and, I, and I'll cut this off if, it, if we are successful pretty quickly, but to succeed, everyone will have to listen carefully, remain present and tune in to kind of reading our virtual room. So I hope everybody understands as a collective group, we're gonna count to the number three, says Marshall. <laughs> and I like that, that's probably wise. I was gonna cut it off if it went too long. So we'll count to the number three and we start now. One, 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 two, start again. two, one, 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 okay, one, start again. one, one, one. Two, two, three, three, four. Uh, I think we might have gotten there, but I, if so, it was an interesting experiment. I've never done that one before. Uh, I'm going to try to refine it a little bit. It might be something you want to try uh, in other areas. I think it's a neat concept. So um, now I'm going to get on to the more uh, traditional um, contest. Uh, Sorry, Laura, I muted all, including you. I you see. Thank you. No worries. So, uh, yeah, I don't really think we got to one either, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it seemed like that might take a little bit longer than I had thought. So appreciate everybody's participation. Um, so moving along, uh, just some of the general rules for the evaluation contest. The contest will start with a timed five to seven minute speech, which is referred to as the test speech. Evaluation contestants will then be sent into a breakout room with a sergeant at arms and given five minutes to prepare their evaluations. When the five minutes are up, the sergeant at arms and we'll ask the contestants to put down their writing utensils and stop any preparation for their evaluation contest. During the time that they are waiting to be called in to give their evaluation, they are asked to please keep their hands in front of the camera so that um, while they are waiting for their time to compete, the sergeant at arms can verify that everyone is complying with the rules. Contestants will then be asked to return to the main room one at a time in speaking order to present their evaluation and will be able to utilize their notes once they've returned to the main room. Each contestant will then give a two to three minute evaluation of the test speech, which will be judged by a panel of judges. Contestants must remain in the room after they've given their evaluations. Contestants and judges have all had their um, eligibility has been certified and the contest chair myself has confirmed the eligibility of the contestants and the chief judge has confirmed the eligibility of the contestants and the judges. 
<clears throat> These proceedings are designed to ensure that we run a fair contest and that each contestant is given a level playing field on which to compete. The following announcements are made in the interest of having a distraction-free environment for our contestants. So first off, please refrain from using the chat during the contest. It can be very distracting. Please check that your microphone is on mute and stays on mute for the duration of the contest. Also, go ahead and make sure that you don't have any devices that could make an audible noise in the event that you somehow come off of mute. Uh, there is no photography allowed during the speeches, and uh, it has been the decision of the contest that this proceeding is being recorded. However, please do not create uh, screenshot photos or other audio uh, recordings without having first obtained the speaker's permission. Once the contest has begun, uh, we ask the audience to please refrain from turning your cameras on and off. So if your camera is on when the contest begins, please leave it on. If it is off, please leave it off for the duration. Um, so as I mentioned, all of the contestants have been briefed. Uh, Mr. Chief Judge, have all the contest officials been briefed and are we ready to proceed with the contest? Contest officials have been briefed and we are ready to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. In uh, order Madam to contest allow- Madam Master, could, could you please, please review the timing rules? rules? I'm about to- Okay. Uh, well, no, I, I'm about to get to some of that. Okay, I'm I, sorry. I'll cover your, your concerns. So. Uh, hey. <laughs> in order to allow the judges time to mark their judging forms, we will have one minute of silence after each contestant's evaluation, and we will have silence after the last contestant's evaluation until all of the ballots are collected. Uh, I will ask the timekeepers to please signal, signal me when one minute has elapsed between, elapsed between contestants' evaluations. The, as I mentioned earlier, the contestants have two to three minutes to provide their evaluation. And the timer is going to be pinned to the view, but recommend that each contestant also pin the timer so that you will be able to see her uh, Zoom Master, can you go ahead and make that happen so that the timer is pinned to the top of the uh, speaker view? Actually, she will just raise her hand. Okay. That will take her to the top left hand window pane. Oh, thank you. For, and there we go. Sorry for the technical thing. I guess I wasn't sure exactly how that happened. I just knew she would appear over there on the left. So thank you, Timer. Every, I hope everyone can see that. She has a blue timer sign up to indicate that that is the timer slot. When your time is progressing, she will hold up the green and then yellow and then, and then red, yellow and now red to indicate that how you are progressing along with your time. I hope that that is clear and everyone can see the timer. The speaking order for the contest was determined earlier by having a drawing for positions in speaking. The order for speaking in the contest today will be, first will be Lynn Blake, second will be Alan Chesney, Third is Heidi Lee. Fourth is Tanya Latham. And fifth is Wayne Good. As each contestant comes into the main room, I will confirm that their mic is in working order and that they can see the timer. The test speaker will be introduced by only by name and speech title. And then I will repeat speech title and name. Are there any questions? If not, 
The evaluation contest will now begin. Laura, can yes. you please, please forward the times again for the evaluation? When the green comes, the yellow and the red. I just want I haven't heard that mentioned yet. Okay, so the green comes at, correct me if I'm wrong on this timer, but I believe the green comes at two minutes, the yellow at two minutes 30, share, okay, two minutes 30 seconds, and the red at three minutes. And then there is a 30 minute, great 30 second, not 30 minute, 30 second grace period after, once the red card has been displayed. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. And I will keep the red up until three minutes and 30 seconds. Then I will return to the timer screen. When you announce we're waiting one minute. What is it, Kristen? I see you shaking no. That's how you'll, you'll keep the you'll keep the red card up until the speech, until the evaluation is over. Correct. So let me just be clear. Oh, okay. on this. So someone goes over 3:30. You just keep the red up until they stop talking. Okay. That that's how that works. So, and when you put the green up, you will keep it up for right. the duration until it is time to show the yellow. Right. The yellow will stay on the screen until it is time to show the red, and the red will show stay on the screen until the speaker finishes speaking. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions before we begin? I think the test speaker needs to test their sound or would like to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Catherine McConkie is our test speaker today. Catherine, would you like to please uh, test your sound and your camera? Yes, okay, so camera is on. Can you hear me at this speaking level? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, good. Are, anything else? Or are you ready to go? And you have five to seven minutes. Can you five, see the timer? I can see the timer. And so I'll have it five, six, and seven. Correct. Perfect. Timer, are you clear on that? Yes. yes. We, will, we will time, time for, for five, five to seven, seven minutes. minutes. Correct. Okay. Any questions before I announce our test speaker speech name and title? Timer, please mute. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we will begin the evaluation contest now. Catherine McConkie, I love you in motion. I love you in motion. Catherine McConkie. He never said the words, but I knew. My father died when I was 37 years old. And in those 37 years, I cannot honestly remember one time that he said the words, I love you to me, but I knew. Now, I understand that we do try to highlight our differences, but I was realizing today that I'm very similar to every person I've ever met in that we want to know that we're loved. We want to know that our friends love us, our spouses love us, our children love us, and our parents love us. But sometimes they don't say the words. My dad was raised post-World War II into the Korean War and men just didn't say the words. He once told my mom, I love you. And if that changes, I'll let you know. So how did I know that he loved me? <laughs> well, one day when we were out getting the car cleaned and I was three years old, I did whatever little three-year-old does. I got out of my dad's side of the car and I skittered backwards. And then I hopped out of the car and I had my right hand at the edge of the doorway. And my dad, not seeing it there, shut the door and my thumbnail got caught in the door closing mechanism. And you can imagine the screams. Well, I remember my dad holding me in his lap at the hospital 
while they shot needles into my thumbnail. What I didn't know was that night he came home and my dad, who I never saw cry, was crying to my mom and saying, I'm so sorry, Bobby, I didn't mean to do it. And my mom told me later that every night for the next four weeks while my hand healed because it was wrapped up and I'm a right-handed girl, he held me in his lap and he helped me eat dinner. So I don't remember a lot of that, but I do remember when I was eight, seven. My dad had a, an Amoco service station. He got it when I was five and it was immensely successful. He was a good mechanic and a good businessman and very personable. So people like to come to his station. Well, then the oil embargo of 72 hit, and maybe some of you are old enough to remember what that was. But quickly, he didn't have enough gas to sell people. And because he didn't have enough gas to sell people, people stopped getting oil changes and coming in to get their cars fixed. And it wasn't long before my dad's very successful station became a chapter 13 Bob's Folly. In the middle of that, my birthday came along. Now that gas station was my favorite place to play. And for a month, he wouldn't let me come to work. And I didn't understand why. Dad, why can't I come to the gas station with you? And all he would say is because I said so, that's why. But then on my birthday, he drove the tow truck home. And in the back of that tow truck was a shiny, brand new Schwinn bicycle, bright red but it wasn't new. My dad had gone to the local landfill and found an old Schwinn bike and brought it back to the gas station. And between oil changes and brake relinings, he sanded it down and then he painted it and he did rust fixer on it. He traded automotive services with a local bike shop guy to get me a brand new Schwinn saddle with the S right in the, in the middle of it to get new calipers and pedals, all the things that are needed to make that bike go. And he brought home the most beautiful bike that anybody has ever seen that essentially he made for me. He loved me. Now, sometimes when we're teenagers and young kids, we forget about this stuff. One night I went to kiss him goodnight and he'd had a bad day and he told me to go to bed. And when I started crying, he told me, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. I'm sure others have heard that. And I decided right then and there that if he didn't want my goodnight hugs, I wasn't going to give him any. And I was dumb enough to let that go until I was 16. But then I started to realize, you know what? My dad loves me. He's just that kind of guy. That's what they do. So I started hugging him and oh, he was so uncomfortable at first. But then pretty soon it got to the point where when I hugged him, he accepted it. And then it got to the point where when I was leaving and I didn't hug him, he'd look a little dejected. And then it got to the point where he would come to give me a hug. He never said the words, but I know that he loved me because he put, I love you in motion. And so my question to you is, even if you don't hear the words, or even if you can't say the words, how can you, with the people who you know and love, and the people who you know love you, put, I love you, into motion? Madam Top, Madam Contest Chair. Thank you, Catherine, for that wonderful test speech. I am now going to ask that the Zoom master place the contestants into a breakout room so that along with our Sergeant at Arms, who is sharing Burlingame, into the breakout room. And to remind you of our contestants, it is they are Lynn Blake, Alan Chesney, Heidi Lee, Tanya Latham, and Wayne Good. So please put them into the breakout room to begin their five minute evaluation preparation.
and our timer will keep up with that. Zoom master, can you please let me know when they have all been moved? Will do, still waiting on Lynn and Wayne. Okay. All right, everyone's in. Thank you. Catherine, please unmute yourself. Would love to spend some time learning a little bit about you. Thank you. Tell us how long you've been a Toastmaster and where you do your toast mastering. <laughs> well, I've actually been a Toastmaster since 1997, but I've known of Toastmasters since in 1970. Four, I believe it was when the Toastmasters organization was moved from uh, from being a male only organization to women. And I watched my mother become the first Toastmaster in our city and fight the men to be able to speak. So I joined Toastmasters because of her. And I'm currently a member of the Morning Cup in Maryville. That is a fantastic uh, introduction to Toastmasters story. Did you get to hear your mom give any speeches? I did. The one that I remember the best was called Two-Legged, Four-Legged Kids, where she talked about me and my three siblings and the number of Great Danes that we raised. Probably the best story I ever heard was the time that she was driving down the highway in Minneapolis in our blue Volkswagen uh, bug with a sunroof and the two dogs, two of our Great Danes were sitting in it with their heads out the top of the Volkswagen and a cop pulled her over and she said, what did I do officer? And he said, nothing. It's just that I had to prove I'd actually seen this. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So how many, so did you have Great Danes your whole life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, our local vet uh, knew that my mom loved Great Danes. She showed them when I was a little girl. And then uh, as as Great Danes would need a home, he would call my mom and say, hey, we have another Great Dane who needs a home. And so I think we probably had about six or seven Great Danes through my childhood, just um, either loving them until they passed on or rehabilitating them and sending them on to new families. Wow, that's fantastic. Now I want to turn to your Toastmastering experience. Do you recall the first icebreaker speech you ever gave? I to did. To really put you on the spot. No, no, no. Actually, it's funny. I did. I did a speech called Everything I Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Glamour Magazine. <laughs> and I, I talked about three things about me that I could relate back to the magazine. I can't remember all of them, but I know that one of them was that I like to take personality tests. And they sure had them, didn't they? Those glamour magazines. I, I remember that myself, right? Oh my goodness. Being, uh, having your personality defined by a glamour magazine, we would kind of all cringe at the thought today, but that's the way it was, right? That was the nineties. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So since you've been in Toastmasters for quite some time, I'm going to make the assumption that you have competed yourself. Is that accurate? That is true. Um, I never actually completed, competed in Minnesota where I first became a Toastmaster, but I competed extensively in Illinois and I won the district level evaluation contest and I went up to district level in international speech, but I did not place. And then here after I moved to, I've also of course won everything that goes up to it. And, um, and then here in Tennessee, my first year, I won the table topics contest at our district convention. Unfortunately, the last one we had in person, I can't wait till we can do that again, but this is a great venue. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of that, do you feel like with us now doing everything virtually that that has added to your learning as a Toastmaster or detracted from it? I would have to say both. I do miss the ability to walk away from my from my uh, 
lectern and really use a space in a larger context. However, because I do have to confine my activity to this big of a window, it does also mean that you have to put more effort into what am I doing within this window. So that's something more that I'm learning. Super. So timer, have we reached the five minutes? I didn't, I started timing a little late, but we are just about at that five minute mark. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the Zoom master to check in with the breakout room. And if they are um, at their five minutes, which I believe they are by now, to bring in our first contestant, who is Lynn Blake. Catherine, thank you so much for being the test speaker today and sharing your great experience with us. And if you can alert me, please, Zoom Master, as to when Lynn is in the room, that would be great. I do want to remind everyone that while the contestants are competing, please do not make any comments in chat and please make sure that you remain on mute. Okay, we are ready to start. Lynn, can I ask you to please do a mic check and confirm that you can see the timer? I'm sorry, Laura, I got kicked out of the meeting. So just give me a moment. Okay, take your time. I can see the timer. Okay, and we can hear you loud and clear. Lynn Blake, Lynn Blake. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and especially Catherine. What a great speech and what a great message for all of us. There were a number of things that you really excelled at. First, you had a very organized speech, which took us on a journey around how you understood your father's love. You also use good vocal variety and gestures. So let me talk a little bit about that. You started very, you started when you were very small and you gave us the first story about the car door and your thumb and how your father, while he never said he loved you or hugged you, held your thumb because it got slammed in the door and you had to have injections, really good gestures. He then helped you eat. So while he didn't say he loved you, you felt his love. Then you talked about his gas station as you got older, so into the next station. And you talked about him building a bike from you. Not a brand new bike, but a bike that looked brand new by the time he got done with it because he put so much care into it and especially how he traded off with other people to get you the seat with the S in it. And then finally, you talked about how you reached out to him to show your love so that he could express his love by giving him hugs every night, even though he didn't want it. And then soon he needed that hug. And then finally, he hugged back. You also said a couple interesting things that brought your audience in. If you don't stop crying, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. I think we've all heard that. If I were to challenge you, what I saw was that you were very enclosed in the window. And what you may consider is stepping back a bit, trying to use your space. You could do those three sections by starting from one side 
when you were small, the other side when you were a teenager, and maybe the middle when you got older to emphasize your message. I really enjoyed your speech and especially the conclusion because you gave us a call to action. How can you put love in motion? Thank you so much, Catherine. We will now have one minute of silence to allow the judges to complete their ballots. Timer, if you will please uh, hold up the red as soon as the minute is complete. And in the meantime, Zoom Master, if you will please bring in our next contestant, who is Alan Chesney. Okay, our minute is up. So we will proceed with the next contestant, unless there is any indication to me in the messaging that more time is needed. I don't see any such indicator. So we will proceed with the contest. Alan, I wanna make sure, let's do our mic check and ensure that you can see the timer. I don't see any timer. Okay, the timer is located at the, uh, she is the very first box on the strip of speakers. There she and, is. Okay, so you, you see her now? Yeah. It's okay. Back yeah. <laughs> okay, and we can hear you just fine. So we will proceed. Alan Chesney, Alan Chesney. Thank you, Madam Contest Master. I very much enjoyed Catherine's speech. I always like to hear a personal speech of this type, just as uh, our keynote speaker had some, some personal stories to share about the, the young girl who was blue, unfortunately. And Catherine also shared a story uh, from her younger days about how her father was not a demonstrative person about uh, his emotions with his family. And I can just imagine, I'm old enough to recall he was probably a World War II veteran and had seen some tough stuff, but he did love his family. He did provide for his family by operating this service station. And uh, he showed his, uh, his love in other ways, as Catherine was telling us such as when she had the little accident and, and he was worried about her for a month. And uh, I really enjoyed her story about his fixing up the old bicycle for her because I can remember when you would go to your neighborhood gas station and there would be a mechanic or two and rather than going to a big dealership with a warranty, you, you knew the people who were gonna fix your car and there was more of a sense of neighborhood or community back then. I thought her, her joyce gestures were very effective. Her voice was good. I liked the vocal variety, especially when she imitated her father a little bit. It, it helped bring the story to life. And I very much enjoyed the details of fixing up the old bicycle, uh, painting and getting a new seat. And, you know, a lot of us have, have dealt with things like that in the past. I did think that one such situation or, or place in which she might have improved was in having uh, some visuals, uh, maybe a picture of her father so that we could uh, sort of imagine the person she was talking about, perhaps a picture of the old gas station. As I said, I can remember old, those old neighborhood gas stations. 
but it was a very effective speech. Uh, she prevented it, per, per, excuse me, presented it very well. And uh, it, I always enjoy it when I can listen to a speech and it gives me a, a lesson or, or some ideas that I can use in, in continuing with my life. And I think one lesson that she was giving us from that speech is to express our love to those that we care about. I certainly hear of people passing away and they're, they're, maybe they didn't tell their children something they should have known. And Catherine, by telling you the story about her father was urging us to express our own love and to have this love for those around us. And so I, I thought a very uh, effective and enjoyable speech and very well presented. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. We will now have one minute of silence to allow the judges to complete their notes. Timer, if you will please uh, present the red background when one minute is up. And Zoom Master, if you will go ahead and bring in our next contestant, Heidi Lee. Thank you. Zoom Master, is Heidi in the room? Yes. I, I see you, Heidi. <laughs> awesome. So your camera is working. Let's check your mic. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. Now, last thing is, can you see the timer? Yes. Okay. We will proceed with the contest then. Heidi Lee. Heidi Lee. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair my fellow Toastmaster, and especially Kathleen. Your title of your speech, I love you, emotion, your attention. So right before you even open your mouth, I'm already curious about your speech. I totally enjoy your speech. Why? Because I'm the same as you. Being an Asian, you know that the culture to talk about love or express our love is very subtle. So your speech is very close to my heart. I really, really enjoy it. And let me tell you, what is the things that work well for me in your speech? The most important thing is your speech is very conversational. It's like you're talking to your best friend. You tell them about your childhood about the relationship you and your dad and is um, very sincere because your tone of voice expressed us. You are very calm demeanor. You are a good storyteller. And also in the conclusion, you ask us if we can relate to the one that we love or the ones who love us. How do you find those love how do you find that spot? Even maybe they don't express this. So it's a good con conclusion. I love it very much. And I think the way to make it even better, here are some suggestions from me. First of all, your pausing is very good, but I think you can dramatize it to make it more exciting by giving half a bit longer pause and also your facial expression can be more expressive in your eye context or your smile. It's like when you find that he really loves you and you are very excited and you feel a lot of love, that kind of things. And then I think you can use your space more because you basically station in one place. 
instead of uh, maybe you can move from one side to another side when you change your story from your three years old to seven years old, and also use more depth of the space, move more backward from three years old and move closer to seven years old and then move closer to nowadays. And one last thing, I think I would suggest anyone who give a speech not using virtual background because you use a lot of hand gesture and sometimes your finger disappear because of the virtual background. So it's kind of distracting. But in conclusion, I love your speech, conversational style, very friendly, and just a few things to express more about your emotion to make it more exciting. And thank you very much, Kathleen, for your speech. Madam Contest Chair. Now that I'm unmuted, thank you. We will now have one, mo one minute of silence to allow the judges to make notes in their evaluation. And timer, if you will please hold up the red background when that one minute has elapsed. And in the meantime, Zoom Master, if you could please bring in the next contestant, that is Tanya Latham. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is Tanya in the room? And I see her. Perfect, your camera's working. Can you please say something to test your mic for us? Hello, Laura. That works beautifully. And how about, can you see the timer? Yes, ma'am. We will proceed with the contest then. Tanya Latham, Tanya Latham. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, we were in the presence of a master this morning. Catherine walked us through not only a well-prepared speech, but an emotional speech that gave us examples of how we can continue forward. Did you notice throughout her speech about motion that she wove in references to transportation? In the very first point, she talked about a car slamming her finger. In the second point, she brought in her father's tow truck and then her very own bicycle. The third point, you may not have caught it as much, but it was the sound of her own feet walking away from her dad. Those are great examples that we can use and continue to grow, especially when we're thinking about how to weave an underlying theme into what we do. Now, Catherine's whole focus was the emotion that her father hid in his motions. As Catherine's continuing to grow, these are things that we can do as we continue to add some motions also. One thing that I caught was when that teenager was stepping away from her father because he wouldn't hug anymore. What about an example of a hug in motion at that moment? What about that snarly teenager face or voice? that could have had that impact at that moment. Those are great pieces that will help that presentation by Catherine continue to rise, continue to grow, continue to even get stronger, which is what we're all looking for. Another piece there is some more pauses. While we're talking about motion and action, those moments of standing still can have some of the best impact. One of the first examples that I noticed could have been right there at the beginning where there was a section where he never showed it. To me, 
instead of ramming those words together, perhaps separate them so that that emotional impact becomes stronger for just that second. The best part of what Catherine shared with us today was that final call to action, or as I'm rephrasing it today, a call to motion. We want that in what we give out there. Rather than dumping information, Catherine inspired. Catherine helped us find a way to move forward. So as you're climbing today, as Catherine's continuing to expand and move into motion, we all can travel together. Contest chair. Okay, thank you. We will now have one moment of silence to allow the judges to prepare their remarks and decisions. And in the meantime, Zoom Master, if you will please bring in our final contestant, Wayne Good. Okay, thank you, timer. Zoom master, or should I just say, Wayne, are you in the room? We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you still. Okay. Now we can hear you. Perfect. Can you see the timer? Yes, I can. Perfect. We shall proceed then. Wayne, good. Wayne, good. There have been so many people in my life who have expressed their love by putting it in motion more than they have with the words they said. Madam Toastmaster, Catherine, friends, what I'm going to do for the next two to three minutes is help us all learn something from Catherine's speech. I'll point out some things she did very well so that we can apply those in our speeches and then offer a few suggestions on how she and we can improve our speeches. I like that you started with an attention getting opening. You had us right from the beginning and pulled us in. And this is an emotional story and it can be difficult to get emotions across, but you did it exactly the way you should. Instead of just telling us the attributes of your father or just telling us how you felt about them, you told stories that showed his attributes and showed us how you felt about them. Our Brains are wired to connect with stories about people. So you chose an effective way to do that. And I think we were all drawn in and we felt what you felt instead of just knowing it intellectually. Another thing you did well was gestures. Now on Zoom, the problem is that if you gesture like you might normally do, they aren't seen. But most of the time when you gestured, you raised your hands a little higher than you normally would to keep them in the view of the camera. That's good. You also had good eye contact by looking at the camera. Occasionally, you do what I do sometimes, you look off while remembering a point, but overall it was excellent eye contact. People suggested that I should talk about my personal life rather than my professional life. I think that was very effective.
Wayne, we've lost your audio. We can give him uh, halfway through to restart if possible with audio difficulties. They have to start halfway through of where they left off, technically, if the like Wi-Fi went down or audio went down. Well, you know, I don't know if it helps, but it sounds like your volume went progressively lower, like, like your mic pickup got reduced somehow. But you didn't go on mute. It just your the volume just got softer yeah. and softer until you went gone. Wayne, okay. please Is do a mic check good? now again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Not really loudly. Is anybody else, uh, Marshall or Nick? Can you comment on that? It is low. It's your your volume is very low, Wayne. How about this? Is this any better? It is not. Hmm. But we can hear you. Timer, I will ask you to restart the time at, actually, hmm. I'm going to ask for Jason's input on this. Does she start, where, where does she restart the timing at? Normal rules, I think, are once the Wi-Fi went down, they can just continue where they left off. Not to completely restart, I believe. So I would ask Chief Judge for that, please, Marshall. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, can he start halfway through as as if the Wi-Fi went out or the audio went out? Yeah. And what? So what does the timer now use as benchmarks? I would say after the one minute mark, I believe. So she should be holding up. Went down. Uh, this is Joyce. It, it went, went down, down on my my side about one minute. Okay. So he will need to start at one minute and 30 seconds. So at, that would be the middle of the speech, regardless of where he was at when he dropped out. So when he gets to one minute, he gets the green card. One and a half would be yellow and two would be the red, correct? 30 seconds will be green. One minute will be yellow, and one thirty will be red. I believe. That I believe is that, correct. I believe that's correct. Yes. It's green at normally. It's green at two, yellow at two and a half, and red at three. But we have to cut it by one minute. So one minute be, thirty seconds. So it would be one minute, one thirty, and two minutes, with thirty seconds to finish. No, it'll be. Green light at 30, yellow light at one minute, red light at 130 with 30 seconds to finish. And we need to do another mic check because I we saw did. Wayne talking. And well, just after that mic check, he started talking again and we I didn't hear anything. I noticed the same thing. Wayne, please speak. We cannot hear you. I'm guessing Timer, there is. Clear? I'm guessing there is a um, something that's automatically reducing. It's thinking that his voice is background noise for some reason. Maybe we cannot hear you, Wayne. He needs to go in under his mic. When you click the little carrot that goes up, you can go in there and test your microphone for volume and things, background noise, things like that. Maybe he has something else open that's damping his microphone settings. If he has multiple applications open, that does happen. If you're using an external microphone, maybe unplug your external microphone and use your computer microphone, whatever option you get, or uh, try to unplug it and plug it back in and see what pump, uh, comes up on the Zoom microphone settings or what you can use, what the select microphone is. We are not hearing you, Wayne. Do you know how to test your mic settings? Yes. Now we hear you. Okay. Loud and clear. 
All right. Recommend staying with your <laughs> No, I shouldn't make that recommendation. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so Tanya, are you my in my evaluation? Um what uh did you see I talked about gestures and then I was going to talk about the virtual background. If I, well, you will need to time it accordingly. Essentially, here is your time frame. You, uh, the green card will come up in 30 seconds. Okay. The yellow card will come up at one minute and the red card will come up at one minute, 30 seconds and you will have a 30 second grace period. Okay. And I'll just try to, I guess, estimate which parts y'all had heard. Okay. Okay, I'm going to announce our evaluator so you know when to start. Wayne, good. Wayne, good. Catherine, as I mentioned, you did a good job of using stories to tell us about your father and your emotions. And you had good gestures, raising them a little bit higher because this is Zoom and we can't always see them. You did a good job of eye contact, keeping your eyes on the camera most of the time. A few suggestions I have. You had a virtual background that was a bit distracting. The one thing to keep in mind is everything should really be about the speech, including the uh, visual aids. And that's what the background is. So the one you had about Toastmasters wasn't telling us the same thing as your speech was. So you might want to consider just using a plain background to not distract us. You had a good strong voice and you mostly spoke soft and slow, which is correct for the type of speech you were giving. However, if you vary that, I think you could get some more impact. When your finger got caught in the door, you could be loud saying it hurt and then soft telling us how your father cried or speak fast when you're excited about the bike and then slow down to tell us how your father repaired a bike. These sorts of things would make both parts of the speech pop and help us remember that. Also, you could use the stage a little bit more. It's kind of hard to do in a Zoom speech, but one thing you can do with the you can only do with a wide angle camera is if you just take a step back, you have space here and here, you can tell us the story and then come up and fill the screen to give us the point. So I think you had a great speech. And what I particularly liked is that I lost my father earlier this year. And in listening to your speech, it helped me finally remember him. And I think that was the case for a lot of people in the audience. Madam Contest Master. Yeah. We have our evaluation contest results in, there were no disqualifications. In the evaluation contest, third place goes to Heidi Lee. Second place goes to Wayne Good. And first place goes to Tanya Latham. Want to just say congratulations to everyone and thank you all for participating in such a great contest. I will now pass